O of season to a T. Today, we're going to be discussing meal prep. And I'm going to discuss how healthy, with healthy cooking, meal prep can be self-care. I want to first thank the Los Angeles alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta for inviting me. I'm a proud member of the chapter, so let's get started. Quick reminder, if you have comments, questions, feel free to drop a chat. We will have someone monitor as we go. Disclaimer, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor. These are just some healthy tips that I've been using. Let me give you a little background. I started season to a T about two years ago in the pandemic, and I started this business to pay homage to my grandmothers. They both were great cooks, and they passed away. So during the pandemic, this was my way. I saw a need, and I'm very service-oriented. So I said, okay, how can I do something during this time? During the day, I'm a diversity and inclusion leader. So I was walking one day just to clear my mind. A lot was going on in the midst of the pandemic. And I said, hmm, maybe I can start a meal prep service for the elderly community and for the homeless community. I was already feeding the community. So then God dropped this ministry into my lap, which is season to a TLLC. Originally, it started off as meal prep. I would post my menu. I would do drop-offs on Sunday. Kind of got a little overwhelming because I do have a full-time job, but that was a way for me to serve my community. So it also branched out about a year later. I started a blog. I have a website, www.seasonsoft.com. And then I also speak and coach. So God has been doing a new thing in my life. And so I'm just honored to be here today to talk about self-care. So we're going to be going over a few dishes. And the dishes that I'm going to prepare today is pan-fried fish, which is tilapia. And then I'm going to go with a chicken breast and veggies. Next, I'll be doing roasted vegetables in the oven. And then I will be doing a mixed green salad. The reason I chose these selections is because they can be switched out multiple ways. So we can use them, the meat on top of the vegetables or as a side, or we can add them on top of the salad as a dish. So they can be used as both lunch and dinner. So the reason I say meal prep is self-care because if you're like me you wear many different hats so we have some mothers wives sisters entrepreneurs business women we serve in our communities we serve in our um sorority so we're just giving all the time so during preparing meals i found that i was cooking giving out so much to everyone else my mom would have to call and say tanita did you eat lunch and i'm like no i'm too busy i'm going from meeting to meeting work to extra activities. So then I thought about it one day. If I'm giving out to people, once I need to make myself a priority and ensure that I'm preparing healthy meals so that I can be physically fit so that I can continue to serve not only the community, but serve myself first. So with that, I started to prepare meals, not only for people, but for myself. So the selections that I'll have, they'll be able to be in your refrigerator. I'll show you how to cook them, store them, and just as we're busy going throughout our week, hop out the meal out of the refrigerator. If you need to warm it up, you can. Some of the meals don't need to be warm, but that's how I use meal prep as self-care. When I'm cooking, another thing that I do is I like to listen to motivated, motivational messages. I listen to different podcasts. I listen to different YouTubes. I listen to different audi audibles to build up myself as I'm cooking. The tagline for my business is, at season to a T, I bring comfort to the strong friend by feeding them physically and spiritually. So my self-care tip is, if I'm giving to others, I need to make sure that I'm being built up physically and spiritually. That's a little bit about myself. Let's jump in. So we're going to start with roasted vegetables, and we're going to change the view. We have two views here so that you can get the most out of the experience. So we're actually going to start with roasted vegetables. My oven is preheated to 425. Um, I have vegetables that are already cut. These are some sweet potatoes. You want to make sure that you cut them in a consistent um, form so that they can cook evenly. Be aware that everyone's oven cook at different temperatures and also the time varies for different items that you're cooking. I'm also going to prepare some red potatoes. 
as you can see here. And then I also have a squash that we're going to roast as well. So when you're roasting vegetables, know that you can pretty much roast anything. You can roast onions, you can roast bell peppers, but since we are starting with root vegetables and the root vegetables would be onions, potatoes, vegetables of that sort, those take about, and a times vary per item. So those take about 30 to 45 minutes. So we're, we wanna put them in first so that they can prepare. I'm gonna also, start with my cookie sheet, cooking sheet. And with this, I like to put full on it because since we're promoting self-care to save time, to make sure I'm not overexerting myself, I like to put foil on it first so that it's an easy cleanup. Everything that I'm doing today is to promote saving time, saving energy, so that that energy and time can be put back into ourselves. Today, I chopped up the vegetables myself, but one of my tricks is that I like to go to Trader Joe's and local grocery stores. They actually have the items pre-cut for you. So you can just go into the vegetable section and then you can see the items that are already prepared if you wanna save time. Another tip with my chopping board, red is for the meat and then the green is for vegetables. So since we're going to start with the roasted vegetables, I'm going to start with the red ones. The sweet potatoes are already cut, so I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. It says about two tablespoons. It just varies on how many you use. This is actually one large potato, and it was about this size, so the size of my hand. So you would put in the olive oil there. I like to cook with sea salt. This is a Himalayan sea salt. And then I have some fine ground black pepper. And with this, I'm going to actually use a spoon to mix it. And know that this food is for myself. This is me preparing my food. But when I cook for different clients, I typically use gloves at different times. But since this is for myself and my wine sister, <laughs> she knows that I wash my hands. So that's why I don't have on the gloves today. So as you can see, you want to make sure that you put enough oil. You don't want the potatoes to be drenched, but you just definitely want a coating to be over them. You're gonna put them on the pan. Another tip, when you're cooking roasted vegetables, you wanna make sure that you don't overcrowd the pan. If you overcrowd the pan, the vegetables can get mushy and it also could take away from the flavor and the consistency of them. So I like to make sure that I don't overcrowd my pan. We're gonna cook these starting about 40 minutes, but I'm gonna put my timer for 20 minutes. And then after 20 minutes, take them out, flip them, and then let them continue to cook. As I mentioned before, my oven is at 425. Next, I wanna add my zucchini. Now, also tip, I have a bowl where I'm putting my trash to save time. You just keep that handy. Another tip, since squash is a soft vegetable, or not squash, this is zucchini, but zucchini, squash, peppers, summer squash, tomatoes, that's a soft vegetable. So these would typically cook for 10 to 20 minutes. I'm not going to put them in an the oven yet, but I just wanted to prepare. So when you're chopping, you want to keep it similar in size so that when it cooks, it's going to be a consistent time that it's cooking. Another disclaimer, I am not a trained chef. I have been cooking since, the, since about junior high. I love to cook for my family. It allows us time to not only fellowship, have fun, but just spend time together as a family. Um, I started off in junior high, typically cooking every single night for my family. My specialty when I was younger, my grandmother, she's from Alabama, and she would come out here for the summertime, and she would teach me how to make peach cobbler from scratch. 
So I started to make that as a young age. I also make cheesecake. Today, we're talking about healthy cooking, so I will leave those specialties out. But it's just to say how I started my cooking career many, many years ago. Like I did with the previous item, I put in a little olive oil, a little sea salt, and just a little pepper. And you want to mix it to ensure that the coat is even so that you can have a consistent cooking time for each. I'm also going to do Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts fall under the crunchy vegetable. So cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, their cooking time is about 30 to 40 minutes. So technically, I could have put the yams and the um, Brussels sprouts on the same container and cook them at the same time. But I, like I mentioned before, we don't want to overcrowd the pan because with doing that, that'll change the consistency of the food. So. Do you have any questions or comments? Perfect. Thank you, everyone. And so to add to your vegetables, there's many th different things you can do. I like to keep it simple because I really want the natural flavor of the vegetables. Yams are typically sweet. So when you're cooking them with a little salt and pepper, you can still taste the flavor. The zucchini, when it caramelizes, is actually sweet as well. But Brussels sprouts um, is similar. Um, I like to do the salt, the pepper, and a little Himalayan salt. This time, I am going to add a little garlic. Some things that you can use are some um, fresh seasoning, not fresh seasoning, but some fresh herbs to enhance the flavor of everything that you're doing. So it just depends on your taste. If you want to mix it up, I added a little olive oil, a little pepper this time, a little sea salt. And then I wanted to get a little creative. So what I did was I went into my cabinet and I pulled out a couple of mixtures. I added a little garlic powder. I added a little Cajun season just to kick up the flavor. So I'm going to do a pinch or two to the Brussels sprouts. Oh, tell her she has to come over one day and we can have them. <laughs> so what I did different this time, I'm going to spray a little olive oil pan, pan on this pan to ensure that it doesn't stick. Another tip when it comes to roasting vegetables, you can either stack the time, meaning if I want to cook the Brussels sprouts, and the zucchini on the same pan, since this time is 30 minutes to 40 minutes for the Brussels sprouts, and for the zucchini, it is about 10 to 20 minutes, I can cook it in the oven for the first 20 minutes, flip them, and then add the zucchini there. But since the zucchini and or the Brussels sprouts and the potatoes are very similar in the time, I'm actually going to cook them on the same pan. Everything has been washed already because I wanted to save time. So I'm not chopping these too large because I wanna make sure that I have enough room on the pan. So, just chopping them. And when cutting potatoes, you really don't know if they're bruised or brown until you cut into it. And it's just a simple fix. Just cut that piece off and put it to the side. I like to check and triple check when I'm cooking. And so with this, I'm actually going to use the same seasoning that I did with the Brussels sprouts with the little Cajun flavor because I like potatoes, but I definitely want to mix up the flavors of the different roasted vegetables that I'm cooking. 
that is helpful because if I'm preparing these meals for multiple times this week, for myself, I don't like eating the same thing every day. I like to have um, a variety. So by me changing the seasonings, it gives me a whole nother feel to what I'm just when I'm cooking. And I'm mixing these in clear containers so you guys can see it. This is actually a measuring cup, but I'm using my silver bowl multiple times. So I am making it happen for what I have. A hearty pinch or two, extra seasoning salt. I already sprayed the cooking sheet with Pam, so I don't have to spray additional. The oil will actually help them not to stick as well. And that was actually perfect because they're not overcrowded. Like I mentioned before, these will cook for 20 minutes. I mean, 40 minutes, and I'm going to put it in for the first 20 minutes at my timer for 20 minutes. Now, while that's cooking, I have some salads that are prepared that I'm going to work on to show you. Actually, I want to start with the chicken breast. So I have my fish and my chicken breast already chopped and prepared. Switch in. Okay, so right now I have chicken breast. So with this chicken breast, what I decided to do when I clean my chicken, I actually clean it with a vinegar. So I rinse it off with water and then I actually put a little vinegar on it, allow it to sit for a while, rinse it off again. And so this is already clean and it's clean. All I need to do right now is season it. With my tilapia, I rinsed it off, cleaned them early, both sides, patted them dry, and then I seasoned them with a Cajun seasoning. Like I mentioned before, we're going to do a pan fried fish, and then we're going to do chicken breast and vegetables. Right now, we're on to the chicken breast. So with the chicken breast, it's already seasoned. I'm going to actually cut on my pan so that it can get warm. I would like want to change the view so we can see the oven. Thank you. Pour in a little oil. A little more. You don't want to coat the whole pan, but you want to have just enough so that it can coat the bottom of the pan. With this recipe, I'm using minced garlic. I also have fresh garlic, so Depending on the time, you can either use fresh or minced garlic. Today, to save time, I decided to go with a minced garlic. And this is about a teaspoon that I'm adding to the oil. And I put the spatula, it's on the table. Thank you. So as that's warming, I'll let that sit there. Thank you. And so I just start to stir it a little so that the minced garlic can start to warm. I have it at about, at about a medium heat. So for the vegetables and the chicken, I'm going to do red peppers. And then, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> switch it a view. I'm doing green peppers, bell peppers, and then red bell peppers. This will allow to enhance the flavor in the chicken. I'm going to let my pan get a little hot. It's not hot yet. So seasoning for this, I want to add in some minced garlic into the chicken breast as well. So with this one, I'm gonna do about two teaspoons. So that'll be two of those. I'm gonna hit it with some sea salt. When we think of healthy, tips when it comes to cooking it depends on people's taste some people like a little extra salt some people like less there's different alternatives you can use uh, mrs dash which is salt free um, you can use garlic powders you can use different herbs to enhance the flavors and so i'm going to add a little black pepper here 
And then also the mixture that I created earlier, which is the garlic powder and the Cajun seasoning. This spoon was used for my vegetables earlier. I wouldn't do it the opposite way. Since I used it with the vegetables, I just rinsed it off. So I'm able to do it in a chicken. But if I did it with the chicken first, I wouldn't go back to the vegetable because that's contamination and that's not good. We don't want people to get sick. Now that I'm done with it, I'm putting it in the sink and I will deal with it later when it's time to wash the dishes. So now the garlic is cooking. It's time to add in handful of red peppers and a handful of green peppers. And as you can hear, it's starting to sizzle. I like to, another one of my tips for meal prep, I like to clean as I go. So typically if I was at home preparing this meal for my um, meal prep clients, I would actually have a dishwater as I'm cooking. I will be washing dishes between breaks, but um, since I'm on camera, I'm not actually washing dishes as I go. But that's one of my tips to save time. You put in the chicken. And we're going to allow it to cook. You. you see the colors? So when I think of healthy cooking, I think of colors. I think of a rainbow. So what we want to do is we want to add as many colors as possible. So when you're cooking with peppers, bell peppers, you can actually use So one second. So when you're doing the bell peppers, you can add colors. So we have yellow peppers, there's red peppers, there's green peppers, there's even orange peppers. Today, I'm using the red and the green to add color to this dish. So we had a question. Is sea salt better than regular salt? Um, I was told that Himalayan sea salt is better. Um, I grew up on seasoning salt, lari seasoning salt, and I'm told that that's not too good. So I try to stay away from the lari and use more of a Himalayan sea salt. I don't use regular white salt, but the only reason I use it is when I'm boiling my noodles or boiling potatoes. Other than that, or boiling eggs. So I don't really cook with a lot of regular white salt. I typically use Himalayan sea salt. I didn't do the research on it, but that's just what I've been told over the years. And it's kind of funny when I think of this business, it is paying homage to my grandmothers. It's things that they taught us. When my granny cooked for us, when she cooked for her kids, they didn't have Himalayan sea salt. And if they did, she didn't cook with it. So to me, a lot of things change over the years, but I just know that when different trends happen, I've been cooking with it for a while. So I try to mix things up that are more healthier because of course the times have changed. We have more access to things. But when you think back, the things that our mothers, our grandmothers, our great grandmothers use, it allowed us to get to this point. So I just say use everything with like wisdom. So you would cook the chicken. You can also allow it to um, put a top on it so that it can simmer. So next, I'm going to check on my vegetables. It says I have about 12 minutes left, but I actually put on a timer on the second dish, not the first. So I actually wanted to check on these sweet potatoes. And they're cooking perfectly fine. If you were here, you can smell the flavors. You can smell, <laughs> you can smell. When my sister came to the door, I was cooking earlier and she was like, oh, it smells like Southern comfort food. And so it was really great. Sora Kimber said, you cannot go wrong with sea salt. And I second what she said. <laughs> Since I'm not a professional, I'm going to make my transition a little different. <laughs> I love cooking shows. So I always will laugh when they was like, oh, I'm going to prepare this dish. And then it's like, voila, and it's done. So 
So when I was cooking earlier, I was preparing some dishes. So I want to show you guys the cooked and ready chicken breast with the green peppers and the red peppers. They cook for about 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> and this is the final product. So we're gonna sit that there. Also, guess what I have? I have some ready-made vegetables. I have the potatoes and I have the sweet potatoes. The first time around, I cooked them together. That was smart. Next, I have Brussels sprouts. They were cooked alone, but they look really good. Let me show you how caramelized they are. I didn't show. Let's see what else we have. Next, we have zucchini. And that was cooked earlier as well. These are our final products. And then, let's see. So I'm going to set these aside and show you how um, I start with the pan seared tilapia. And as a reminder, I went with these dishes because, like I mentioned before, we can use them many different ways. Now, this baby right here, cast iron skillet. That's all I knew when I grew, when I was in the kitchen with my grandmothers. They had a cast iron skillet. Um, as you can see, mine hasn't gotten that much wear and tear. Um, I bought it recently. I was shopping at Home Goods, and when I saw it, I was like, I need a cast iron skillet. I was trying to take my mom, but she wouldn't let me have it. But um, it's safe. It's, yeah, my sister just said it's a staple, especially in our communities. So um, just cooking with a cast iron skillet to me, it makes everything taste better. So I like to incorporate cast iron skillets when I'm cooking. So with this, I'm going to do the pan fried tilapia. You cut on the heat. And I'm actually gonna make room in the oven. So I'm gonna pull one of the dishes out. So So with this, the pan is warming up. If you've ever cooked with a cast iron, you definitely know that it takes a little longer to warm up. But when that baby is hot, it's hot. So I'm going to allow it its time to normally warm up to do what it do. Add a little oil. Also, I have some unsalted butter that I'm going to add. Hey, Jason, should you have a plate? Yep, come get it. <laughs> Letting that warm up and melt. This is another item that you can actually add different herbs to. So adding the herbs, you can add like some thyme, some rosemary, kick it up a notch. We're going to use some fresh lemons today to add to our recipe. I've already started chopping on this, so I actually want to wipe it down. The butter and the oil are starting to marry in the pan. That means come together as one. <laughs> Alrighty, it's almost ready. You can start to see the smoke forming there. Clean knife. Chopping the lemon. So once again, when I said I think of healthy cooking, I think of colors. This is a nice vibrant yellow that's going to be added to the fish. I would typically use my tongs, but I don't have them nearby, so I'm just going to use a fork. That's the beauty of cooking from your own home. I have everything that I need here. So now that the pan is hot, this is the tilapia that I cooked. I mean, not cooked. I actually prepared earlier. I rinsed it off, and I seasoned it with the Cajun seasoning. I'm going to sit it 
in the pan. It's in here, it's okay. Change it to if we can see it from the widescreen. So when you're cooking a fish, it will take about four to five minutes on each side. And with that, um, you just want to let it sit. Um, it's at medium heat, so it's starting to bubble around. And then I actually want to add a little extra seasoning on it. That was some Cajun seasoning. I'm actually going to hit it with a little Himalayan sea salt. To add some more colors, I'm going to add some bell peppers to it. The bell pepper add another flavor. Okay, so we change the view. You can see that it's cooking there. So we will let that cook for five minutes. Once I flip it, then I'll add my lemons. Are there any questions? <laughs> so, as I'm cooking, as I mentioned before, I had things already prepared. So I have the salad, the mixed greens that has been already washed and dried. So I have it in this nice, pretty glass container. I chopped up some cucumbers and tiny triangles, so we'll add some to the salad. A nice mixed green salad, can't really go wrong. You can add egg for additional protein. You can add all types of fruits and vegetables. Um, what, what we're doing today, I am gonna add some strawberries. Like I mentioned before, I don't like eating the same thing every single day. The strawberries are sweet, so it actually changes the consistency, not the consistency, but it changes the taste of the food that we're preparing. So we have our tomatoes, we have our cucumbers. I'm gonna add some fresh bell peppers. It's a lot of green in this, but you can add carrots, which will add some nice orange. It's been about five minutes, four to five minutes, so time to flip over the tilapia. And once I flip it, now it's time for me to add the um, add the lemons. Let's see that. Add it there. Just because I'm a stickler and I don't miss things. <laughs> My spatula here is the same spatula that I was using with the chicken. I use it with the fish. Typically, you would do that, but there are two meats and it's for me. So if I get sick, unfortunately, I'll deal with it. But um, just sharing because I noticed it. And I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm, I'm the type of person that I watch things and I'm looking at everything. So I don't miss the beat. So I'm assuming there's some people out there like me. So just sharing. Full transparency. Okay, so you let that cook five minutes one side, five minutes on the other side, you add in the lemons, so then you add it in the oven. One thing about cast iron, they are heavy. So I don't want to be on camera dropping it. What I would do is cook this for an additional 10 minutes in the oven. These have been in for 20 minutes. What you would do is flip them over. I'm going to put my timer on for the fish so that I won't get distracted and forget about it. Fun fact, even if I burn it, I have some already ready that's perfectly made to share. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, can you give me the other spatula, please? Thank you. This was cleaned earlier, so now I'm just flipping them over and they are nice and brown. For the potatoes, for the vegetables, it was 425. For the fish, I put it at 400. One way to test your vegetables. So when it comes to cooking for people, you also have to ensure that you're, you're cooking kind of consistent with everything that you're cooking. For myself, I typically like my vegetables a little bit harder. I don't like them overcooked, like super mushy that you can't taste the texture. You can't like taste the natural flavor of it. So one way to taste your vegetables, I got a fork. Rinse it off. And then you can just, it goes straight through. It means it's ready. You can either poke it with the fork or you can try to cut it with the um, fork. It just cut right away. So. I mentioned before, everyone's oven cooks differently. So my oven has been on for a while at 425, so it was already at the temperature it needed to be. This probably cooks for about a good 30 minutes, so they're actually done, and the time varies. So I mentioned earlier, for the different root vegetables, it can take 30 to 45 minutes. Our vegetables here are done. I'll show you the cover. All right, so now as they do on TV, they put the fish in the oven and then they take out done fish. So this is my done tilapia. It was prepared earlier, right before I was so basically I cook all day. So I probably uh we went live at four o'clock. I probably start cooking at two o'clock so I can have everything ready. So this is the fish that was prepared earlier, as you can see. It's brown around the edges, gives you that crispy taste. Um, kind of an illusion of fried because it's not fried in like actual grease and batter. It's a pan fried and it was um, cooked in soft free um, butter and then a little olive oil. And then I seasoned it, put it in the oven. So now it's the meal prep time. And when I say meal prep, it's to actually prepare the meals that you're going to eat on throughout the week. So after you've done all that cooking, you may want to actually have dinner themselves. I pulled out my nice dishes. Can you guys see that though? So for this, I'm going to prepare my, if I was going to sit down and dine. So I would prepare this meal by, let's see. Tongue. Now I actually need my tongue, so I'm actually going to get them because Alrighty, so for me, I'm actually going to add a little salad on my plate. I want those beautiful colors. How much time do you have? So these strawberries have already been washed. I'm going to cut off the tips and then cut it in half. If we can change the view so that they can see me chopping the vegetables or the strawberries. And as you can see, this one strawberry went a long way. It added more color to the plate. And it's definitely going to add some sweetness to the meal. So we have the vegetables there. What I want to do is go with the beauty about roasted potatoes. It can either be, and this is my vegetable spatula. I'm keeping track now by colors. Red is for vegetables. So 
right, the roasted potatoes, it can actually be a side dish. So I'm going to add my starch, which will be the roasted potatoes. For the salad, I want to actually add some cooked zucchini. And then for this meal, I'm going to go with the fish. This fish was purchased at Costco and they're really big. So typically you can probably go with like one side. And this would be a finished plate. This is one option. So this would be, if I was preparing dinner for myself, I would have a nice salad with mixed vegetables. I have the zucchini, I have the fresh strawberries, I have a side of the roasted potatoes, and then I have the tilapia. So that would be one meal. Now, I wanna prepare meals. I like to challenge myself to try to eat at least one salad a day. I typically like to go with a salad at the end of the day because that will allow me to go with the lighter meal towards the end. So allow myself to have a good breakfast. The goal is to eat three meals a day. Some people don't eat three meals a day. Some people are more snackers. If you're a snacker, you would just break up your portions and you can have like a fruit, some nuts. That could be one um, serving. Another meal could be like a half a salad, either by itself or you can add a protein to it. So for this, I would like to add to the, my salad, I would actually add some chicken. If you want, I would actually add the chicken to a separate container because I don't like cold chicken on my salad. I like for my chicken to actually be warm. So what I can do, I typically have smaller containers as well. So I would just use a side, a side smaller portion, add in my chicken and my vegetables. For this salad, I'm gonna get a little fancy and add in some sweet potatoes as well. Salads can be really hearty. It definitely depends on what you're adding into it. So with that, this is a salad that I've pre-made and it has the mixed greens. It has the tomatoes, the cucumbers. And so I would pair it up with the chicken breast with the peppers. And then I would also pair it with the sweet potatoes. So it would go into my fridge in two separate containers. When it's time to eat, I would just pop out the salad, pop out the food that I want to warm up, pop it in the microwave for a little bit. Some people don't like the microwave, if that's you. Feel free to pull out a pan, warm it up, and then add it, in, add it together. And then you have a meal. What that has done is it's actually saved time. So you already know what you're going to eat. That's meal prep. So you have them already prepared in your fridge. You pull them out when it's time to eat. So that's saving time. That's one option. The next option for this salad, as with this one, it's gonna be the chicken and the yams, just to add, kick it up a notch. So the next one I wanna do is I wanna add strawberries to it. The strawberries, I add blueberries to salads, I add strawberries. Um, you can actually add any type of berries to kick it up. It all depends on your preference, which you like to eat. And then I could go with smaller chunks, but I like to see what I'm eating. So I'll add the strawberries in. This time around, it's a larger salad, so I would go with two strawberries, cut off the tips that have already been washed and cleaned. And I actually packed dried them as well so the water wouldn't just be sitting on them. So with this one, another option I have is I can eat it with the fish, I can eat it alone, 
or I can just leave it as is if I want. We've also prepared multiple, multiple vegetables. We prepared Brussels sprouts, red potatoes, zucchinis. So it just all depends on what you feel like having on your salad. With this one, it's going to be different because it has strawberries. This one doesn't. So I'm actually going to eat, leave it alone and eat it that way. We have two meals already. The next meal I want to prepare, I don't want salad for lunch. I've been working all day. I kind of want something that's going to stick to me. So with this one, I'm going to add the chicken breast. I'm going to add some zucchini. Now this, everything can be warmed up together. So have it in the fridge, pop it out. All of these items taste really good warmed up. If it's been in your fridge, the flavor would be able to be marinated in. So it's definitely a good selection. So with this one, I have the chicken breast and veggies. I have the zucchini. I actually want potatoes to this one so that, like I mentioned, this would be my lunch. I typically like to go with dinner or the salad because the salad is lighter. I work, in, I work from home, so I have to watch my portions because I don't want to eat too heavy. And that one o'clock meeting, that means it's going to be off camera and I might be busy. Dozing off. Not really if um, someone's watching from work. Just kidding. But um, I don't want to eat too um, heavy at lunch so that I can stay up. So these are actually foods that will like energize you as well. So that's three meals. Put these in the refrigerator. Now I know, let's say it's Monday. Monday I'm going to have the chicken breast, the zucchinis, and the potatoes. For dinner I'm going to have the mixed green salad with the strawberries. I have Monday done. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat. Breakfast, I typically go with an oatmeal, tea, coffee. I'm not really a coffee drinker, but it all depends. I have different fruits that I eat throughout the day. Some people like to add protein shakes to their diet, but this is just a simple way that you have the food already prepared. It does take time to cook. Most people do their meal prep on Sunday so they can kick off their week. For my clients, I typically cook on Saturday, not Saturday, on Sunday drop off their meals. They already have them. They're prepared throughout the week. Some people don't like to eat food that's been in a refrigerator for too long. So with that, I'm actually going to cut off the fish because the timer went off. But with that, you can actually milk prep twice a week. So you can prepare on Sunday and then you can prepare like midweek, like Wednesday. But typically the items that I prepare, they last for a good five days. And that would be like the salads. I'm not sitting the meat on top. I like my meats to be warmed on my salad. So I put them in separate containers. And then we're going to go with the really hearty salad. So with this salad, I'm going to add in all the vegetables that we cooked earlier. So I'm going to add in some Brussels sprouts. Let me keep jumping on it. I'll add the cooked zucchini. Another item I like to cook roasted are carrots. Roasted carrots are really good. They still have their like, sweet consistency. I like to mix. So if I'm trying to eat right and I'm trying to stay away from the sweets, I don't really drink sodas, but people that um, have like a sweet tooth, they want soda, they want candy. They want different things, a way to stay away from it and curb that sweet tooth is to throw in some vegetables that are sweet. The yams have a natural sweetness to them. Carrots are sweet as well. And if you cook the Brussels sprouts, the, not the Brussels sprouts, if you cook the zucchini the right way and it's caramelized, it's actually sweet. So with this one, I'm going to also add in the sweet potatoes. Like I mentioned before, I wanted this one to be my hearty salad. So since it's hearty, it's going to have all of the vegetables that we prepared earlier. Add in some tomatoes for color. 
one thing I like, I like to also add artichokes to my salad. It gives it like a pickle flavor. I'm always looking for flavors that like enhance the salad and changes it up. Because like I mentioned before, I don't like eating the same thing every single day. Salads can get boring, but if you make it right, it's actually fun. So you add the vegetables in. We have cooked vegetables. We have fresh vegetables. And did you know you can season your salad? No, I'm not saying season it with like seasoning salt. There is actually salad seasoning, Italian seasoning that you can add to it. So there's ways to kick your salad up. You just have to play with it and find what works for you. The last thing I'm going to add on this salad, this is the hearty one. Is the vegetables that I have left, the bell peppers and cucumbers. Not cucumbers. Oh, oh I didn't have cucumbers left. And right here, in this amount of time, we were able to create four meals. This will be for my Monday. This will be for my Tuesday. And I have enough. And then I also made the plate if I was going to sit down and eat dinner. So that's three meals that are already made Saturday if I was going to eat this on Monday, Tuesday. And then I have still, I have two tilapias that are in the oven. I still have chicken breast. So it's enough to mix it up throughout the week. You can use the roasted vegetables to recap. You can use them as side dishes or you can use them to enhance on your salad. The chicken, the fish, those are different proteins. You can boil some eggs, chop them up, add them to your salad. You can also add avocado. It just depends on what you like. And it's play with it. Be fun. Add colors. Carrots. Did you know carrots are purple? They have some purple carrots. They have some white carrots, each of them have a different like flavor, a different taste. Play around with different carrots, see which ones you like. I mentioned before, Trader Joe's is my little hint. I go there, they have like things already chopped. If you don't want to chop, I prefer to chop my food because I want to make sure it's fresh. I like to pick it, I like to touch it. Um, so that's just my preference. But for people that are short on time, some people that don't want to do all the chopping, go to your grocery store. Some items are already chopped. So these are just some ways and some tips that I like to promote my self-care because I know that I wear many different hats like many of you on the call today, on the Zoom, on the meeting. So these are just some things that I do in my life. So thank you for watching. Once again, my name is Tanita. I'm the owner of Season 20, and I like to bring comfort to the, to the strong frame by feeding them physically and spiritually. We're going to open it up for Q&A. If you have any questions, any comments? Okay. Okay. Got it. So, some of the favorite tips that you didn't hear it was buying pre chopped items, it's adding fruit to your salad, and it's adding color to your meals. Did I miss anything? All right. There. Yeah. Thank you. We will taste and see a little later. <laughs> but I made these things time and time again. So, like I also mentioned, it also varies to your taste. So, play with some different. Um, oh, I had a question about what suggestions for dressing. So, dressing is also a natural way to like change up the flavor with the salad. You can go with a simple balsamic vinaigrette. You could go with the ranch, but if we're trying to do healthier options, I would want to stay away from more of the dairy items. You can actually make your own dressings as well with a little lemon juice, a little oil and vinegar, and then you can add a little season to it to make your own dressings. Um, sometimes, depending on what you put in it, let's say with this hearty salad, if I would have added the artichokes that are in a the can, they actually would give a natural flavor and juice that I don't have to add a dressing to my um salad. I know my mom, she likes to add lemon juice and a little um, oil to her salads, not to do the dressing. Um, what else? It just all depends. There's so many dressings out there that you can add to your salads. It just depends what you're looking for and what taste. Where did I get my meal prep containers? I got them at Restaurant Depot. I buy them in bulk, so um, I'm cooking every week, so I have like a container of 300. But um, other containers that I've got for salads, I got them at Smart and Final, 
I know Costco has containers as well. Even your local Dollar Tree or 99 cents store, they have containers as well. These are my containers that I use for meal prep. My glass items, they have tops to them. So for my personal um, meal prep, I would fill this with vegetables or I would fill it up with the chicken breast, put a top on it. And this is like the Pirate's glass. I use it for um, home because they're microwavable. I eat easy store, put it in the refrigerator, take the top off, put it in the microwave. So thank you for that, Candice. Any other questions? All right, we have three minutes left. I definitely want to thank everyone for being patient with me, joining, and I just hope that you use some of these tips for meal prep and just find ways to enhance your own self-care. Um, people look at self-care differently. Like I mentioned before, I like to listen to an audible. An audible is a motivational speak, a speech, or I like to listen to a podcast because that's actually me feeding my mind and my spirit as I'm cooking. Cooking is very freeing for me. It allows me to be creative with different items. Another one of my items I like to make is a little twist to it. When I make spinach, I actually like to add cherry tomatoes to it. That's colorful. It's red and, um, it's red and green. And then it also has um, a different texture and a different taste. So the tomatoes are sweet. You can also roast tomatoes. That would be a soft vegetable. So you would do that for about five or 10 minutes. So don't be afraid to play with different seasonings, different herbs, different spices. Um, I know a lot of people, like some people don't eat mushrooms, some people don't like different things. Just try. Try it out. You may like it. I know um, people prepare things differently. So a lot of things that I go to is like Pinterest. Um, they have a lot of quick recipes. So I'm always on Pinterest. I'm always on YouTube to see how to make something. And then I do my personal twist to it. Like, hmm. I wonder how this will taste by adding this, or I wonder how it would taste with taking something out. So just play around in the kitchen. Um, take it back to when we were younger. We weren't afraid to do things. So I encourage you to play around in your kitchen. Um, taste it first before you introduce it to your family. You don't want to make a dish like, honey, taste this. And he's like, mm -mm, it's not good. So <laughs> save yourself. Um, because the people in my life, I'll give you an example. DeAndre, my brother. If it's not good, it's not, he, he's going to tell me, and I would know. And I'm a stickler about that, so I like to I like people to eat my food fresh and hot because I've tasted it, and I actually cook with love. And so um, I pick the items. I make sure that they're fresh. And so that's something that I personally do. So I'm definitely thankful that God has given me this business, this ministry, so that I can pour it into people and encourage them physically and spiritually. One more thing. We have about a minute left. Are there any questions? I don't see any more. Okay, so um, we have more time. I'm a storyteller. I can talk all day long. So um, for myself, if you're interested in having cooking demonstrations for your family, team building for work, feel free to send me a message. My email address is season to a t at gmail.com. You can go to my website, www.seasontoat.com. I post a lot of videos on my Instagram page at season to a t. You'll find my link tree um, link there where you can find more about my blogs, who I am, the things that I'm doing in the community, ways to contact me. But I'm open. I'm here to serve, and I love doing what I'm doing. Um, this is a, it's an expansion. This is how I serve. This is what God has given me. All right. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.